Hi there, David Taylor or Mr. Pelagonium back with another video for the Pelagonium and Geranium Society. Uh, we're back in the greenhouse. Thankfully, it's cooled down a little bit in the UK at the moment. Um, so I'm able to film a video in the greenhouse. Yes, I actually am. Uh, we've been through some record-breaking temperatures in England uh, and indeed the rest of the UK, I think, uh, each different country had their own individual records broken. Uh, we'll talk a, bit, a little bit about that in a moment. Today, I'm actually going to talk about regal cuttings. I'm going to do a regal cutting just to show you the way that I go about doing it. It's nothing too complicated. Uh, so let's have a look. Well, hello again, it's good to see you um, back in the greenhouse in normal mode, I'm pleased to say. Uh, we've just been through uh, an excruciatingly hot spell of weather in, uh, in the UK, record-breaking temperatures. Um, England went above 40 centigrade for the first time. In the greenhouse, it got up to about 45 centigrade. Um, but thankfully, the extreme heat was only for sort of two or three days. And the Pelly stood up to it quite well, actually. It very much is in extremely hot weather, little and often, uh, as I've always said in the past, a little bit of water. Because I was having to do that virtually every day, I wasn't feeding. I, I always stress that I feed it every watering, but because I was having to do a little bit, just a little smidge in the bottom of the saucer each day. I was just using water for the majority of the time, but um, they all come through fine actually. And I, I hope you, if you're viewing from England, you know, got your plants through without too many problems. Now I have been, I have done one or two videos. I was actually filming from outside the door. I had the tripod and camera outside so that I could work here. Uh, but the camera sort of kept relatively cool outside. Uh, I didn't actually film, obviously, during the extremely hot days, but um, I was able to put a couple of videos out. I thought today um, a number of the regals have put on a, a lot of growth. So we've got lots of prime cutting material now on the regals. So I thought I'd run through um, what I do with my regal cuttings. Now, regals from about midsummer, they put on a lot of more sort of stem-based growth. Uh, regals tend to throw their bloom relatively early in the summer. Um, then they come again in the sort of late summer. Um, now, a lot of mine have actually come again early this year. Again, it could be because of the warmth and the heat uh, has really sort of pushed them through um, very quickly this year. But in the main, you start to get lots of good stem growth going on, um, which produces good cutting material. And generally, you want to get your cuttings from non-flowering stems. Now, in terms of compost, I actually use my uh, standard pot compost now, which is about a third of drainage material in whatever type of compost you choose to use. For cuttings, though, I add a bit of extra perlite. So a little bit of extra, relatively fine, it's medium perlite, but I just mix that up in there. So that becomes probably about 40% of drainage material as opposed to my normal 30%. Um, I don't need a great deal because I'm only probably taking a couple of cuttings in this case. So I'll just mix that up, add a little bit of water to it to make it nice and damp. Now for my cuttings, I use a, a two inch pot individual for each individual cutting. That's the way I do it. Now there's lots of ways you can do it. You can use a slightly larger pot and put two or three cuttings in. Um, just have to be a little bit careful with the um, uh, using a larger pot because uh, you don't want it, certainly in the early days of the cutting, you don't want it to be over wet. So something to bear in mind, that is. Okay, so here we are. Then we're closed up here on this um, on this regal plant. Now, this is one of my regal seedlings. It's in a five-inch pot. It's grown very fast, actually. Um, it's almost put on two spurts of growth. Now, I have obviously explained before how you get these flowering stems. 
and grow stems. Now the flowering stems are usually thinner and these bear the fruit effectively. It's the seed in this case. Now I'm actually just going to nick that off, give it a, a little bit of a dead head. We have spoken about dead heading be before, so I'm just going to go down. These Most of these blooms have gone over. Now this one's a bit more sturdy. You see how it's a bit thicker? So that is a main growth stem. Now we've got an, actually an even better one around the other side here. If we look at this one, this is very strong. Here it is. See, look at this one. It's very thick, very strong. There's absolutely no sign of bloom on it. And this is the one that I'm going to certainly choose for a cutting. Now, the main thing, of course, to consider is that it's the end of July. You certainly don't need any bottom meat at this time of year. I take all of my cuttings um, in the summer uh, so that I don't have to use any heat. Right, now, if we go down into this cutting that I'm going to choose, um, you will see here that we've got a nice inward growing stem here. This is already beginning to break. I'm hopeful that you can see this. Already got a break in there. Uh, we've got breaks coming all up here. So I am going to cut just above this node here. And you can already see that there is a minor little stem break that's already beginning to break out. And indeed the node below it has got a little minor a baby stem just beginning to break out of that one as well. So I'm going to make my incision here just above this node. Just a slight bend back just to help it on its way. And there we are. But this is a really good strong stem. And there we are. Let's go around here because there's another, we've got a couple around this way. Oh, am I on? On my scissors. Uh, this is a pretty good one. Pretty sturdy. Again, I'm going to go down fairly deep. Because all of the growth is green, you want the base of the cutting to be really quite firm and strong. And so that's why I'm going relatively deep. Because if I go up too too high, if I take the cut, say the next one along, the next node along, the stem is starting to get too too loose and it's too fleshy, and that's far too easy to rot off. So you want to go, you want to, your little stems that you're cutting off to be quite strong, to be able to withstand, you know, all of the eat all of the ills that may come of it, which is, you know, damping off and that kind of thing. Got another one here. I think I will go a bit lower on this one. I would normally like to get cut above there, but I think that's too fleshy. So I'm just going to cut that one above a outer break node, but it's not a problem. Yeah, that's okay. It's a little bit thin, but it's quite sturdy at the base. Absolutely no sign of any bloom here. So this one is good enough, but we'll go back quite deep. Because that is actually on a flowering stem that has subsequently thrown a growth stem. So there we are. So in this case... See now how this was originally a flower stem, almost certainly. You've got two flower, dead flower breaks on it. So what's happened now, in the growth of the summer, this has put on a growth stem. And so what we will do, we will cut back to the very base of that, and that's a very strong cutting. We'll, have, we'll do that one separately, and I'll show you how that's grown. So there we are. That's the mother plant. Um, I mean, it was watered yesterday. It's quite a warm day. So it's not, it is fairly dry because the, the plants are drying out quite quick now. Because, it, because of the temperatures are in the sort of low 20s, mid 20s in the greenhouse, 
Um, they're growing quite sort of fast at the moment and drinking quite a bit. So, uh, I mean, we could use that as a cutting, but I've got six. That's enough for me for the time being. Okay, so we're just homing in now and I'm hopefully going to be able to show you. So the main thing is, now you see how I pushed up. Because this is quite firm, the leaves are easily broken off. And in this case, I will break off the bottom two. That's about three to four inches tall. So, I don't know, 10 centimeters tall, something along those lines. Um, we remove the stipules, of which there are a few. Now, in terms of, I will move, I would prefer to snap. So there we are, I've snapped those off. Clean knife, this is Jay's fluid. Good clean knife to uh, do your cutting, which we've got this little saucer here. So there we go, um, it is just literally, you can see where the node crosses down, just literally below it. There we are, it's on a slight angle actually. There we go, just literally a millimeter or two below it. Just trim it off. Um, now what I do with Regals, I do use a rooting hormone powder. Now I've had this for years. This is Vitax, just an organic rooting powder. It's a growth supplement, but I mean, realistically, one of the main reasons you're going to use this is as a fungicide. Um, I don't put very much on, it's just literally the, the end of the, uh, of the cutting. That's all you need to use it for. Now I also want to get a little bit on that wounded leaf there as well. More as a fungicide, but you can knock nearly all of it off. I've knocked nearly all of that off there. And there we are, that's that one done. Just stand them upside down. We'll do our big strong one that we had initially. These should snap easily. Now you want, yeah, about three main leaves on the uh, ply. You don't need any more than that. Um, I'll take that one off as well. Okay, we got a little one and three others and the two at the top. So these are fine, just take the stipules off, I'm just peeling these back. But you can see how sturdy this cutting is. That's the vital thing about it. It's very important that your cutting is sturdy, not limp. Um, I mean, these may limp slightly. I am just gonna nick out the, the little node shoots that are coming out of this one because when you got them below the compost level, this will go up to about there, you, there is a chance that you may get bacterial infection from the compost, which will infect this node and potentially throw up leaf gall, a leaf gall node. So you need to be a bit careful. Just take that back. Again, we'll go on the angle. You can see I'm going on the angle here. Very sharp knife required. Always be careful when you're using sharp knives. Let me just take that up a second more. Trim down, just flatten it off so that it's relatively sharp to be able to push down into the compost. And that's that one. Into there. I'm just going to knock that off. So I've got a bit on that node break that I cut off, and obviously on the base. I don't like a lot of it though. I'll blow that off. Here we are, so our second one then. Okay, right, so. I've left to, until last this one where we're breaking off onto a, from a node. Now, 
This was obviously a flowering shoot, and as you can see here, there's one of the flower um, stems, another one just there. But in the, in the warmth of the summer, it's made the decision to throw basically a stem break uh, above. So this is a good stem. Uh, it's fine for using as cutting material. Uh, but I am actually going to go right down to the base of where it's coming out of this flower stem, okay? Um, and you can clearly see here where that this is really sturdy, very strong, very sturdy, and is ideal for cutting material. Just going to continue to peel back the stipules there. And so all I'm going to do, I'm going to just cut this off of that stem there. Just literally the base of it. So I'm using the base of the cutting. There's going to be an awful lot of good growth hormone in here. And it's ideal for cuttings. That's why we do them just under a node, because that's where there is a concentration of growth hormone. And so I'm just literally using that area in here where it would have had a good spurt of growth hormone to produce this stem in its entirety. And it's ideal. It's green, but it's just nice and strong. Um, I'm just going to trim that down a little bit just to square it off a little bit. And that's ideal. There we are. So there, that's that one. Um, pop it in there. And there we are. There we have our um, six cuttings. Right, now I don't know now whether I've got enough compost <laughs> here for six. Let's have a go. So all I do is obviously fill up the uh, the pot Compress it down a bit. You can press it down relatively firm. There's one. I'll just speed through this. Right, okay. Um, I've done the labelling. I've sped through that. So now it's just really a question of making a, a little bit of a head start for them. You can use any implement. I'm using the end of my knife uh, just to literally make a start for them there right and it's just a question of what i would do any of the slightly fuller pots i would put the bigger cuttings and it's just a question of pushing down until you get to that leaf joint where you can see here let's move that across a bit um, i've left that just the compost line just below a leaf joint but that's quite deep it's well over an inch or well below two centimeters deep firm it round and that's that one done look at this next one again this is fairly deep push this right down until it gets Just firm the compost round. Just going to put that over there. Just a question of sticking the labels in. Right, and what I'm going to do when they're labelled, I'm going to sit them in some water. But I will literally just not let them have very long at all. I'm just going to stick that down there. Put the label in. They will literally be in it for... 30 seconds potentially or as long as it's going to take me to do this when I put the last one in I'll take the first one out except I'm running out of room stick that label in that one which I put over there and what you want to do then I've got a little bit of a shaded area underneath here keep them shaded for a week or so uh, can be a little bit longer. I mean, still light, still good light, but relatively shaded. Uh, that's what you want, ideally. And then bring them up into a lighter situation just about, as I say, just over a week later.
There we are, job done. That's half a dozen regal cuttings for you today. Um, you can do that really now when you get that growth coming through. And a lot of my regals have got that kind of good stem growth coming through now. So there we are. We're probably, I mean, I have done plenty on zonal cuttings before. I may do some zonal cuttings for you as well in a later video. Um, as I said, though, I've got a repotting video um, that I've actually already filmed that may or may not go out before this one. Um, we'll have to see how they go in development terms. I'm trying to get at least one video out a week at the moment. Um, so as always, if you're just passing and not subscribed, click that subscribe button and put your notifications on so you get uh, notified when I put a new video out. As I said, there's plenty coming up, so uh, I'll see you again very, very soon. Bye-bye for now.